like it. A few folks, great. Um, you know, there have been obviously a few new developments as time is carrying on, probably since the last time. Some of the most significant elements, uh, China had the first spacewalk. Uh, Elon Musk with SpaceX, a private company, has now successfully put uh, a payload into orbit. So these are very significant milestones on many fronts. Uh, and one, the Chinese activity questions this, you know, next space age. When you actually make it to space, that means you're, you've made it. And so a lot of countries are buying for this. So Russia, China, India, uh, Japan, there's a lot of activity going on right now. And so with China, you know, what they do a few months back, they, they took something out of the sky, right? They were able to uh, demonstrate that they can take an asset that we have in space out of space. So obviously we have a lot of assets out there uh, that really aren't really defended right now. And so we have on several fronts here at a national level, there's a movement going on that says, what are we going to do? Right now, NASA has said they're going to the moon and Mars. And what that's done, and Mike Griffin, the head of NASA, will tell you, that's left a market open for the private sector. And so now the technology is at the time now. Spaceport's been coming to this area. I saw one article in 1959, Spaceport in our backyard. 1990s was a time when the DCX was here with McDonnell Douglas testing in this basin. And then Lockheed with Treasure Star. Both those companies selected Spaceport America in this area for that single stage to orbit mission. And there's a lot of reasons why. But this coupling for the first time of government dollars with the private sector dollars is going to accelerate this advancement. The government, we've gone stale since the Russia versus US race for the moon. That was an exciting time. Everybody probably remembers that. That was a peak of the space. And then things kind of stabilized. But now there's a second space age coming. And like the film industry, the film industry is about $14 billion a year. And I draw that because I think everybody recognizes that there's been some benefits here by doing Transformers. Who thought that Holland Air Force Base would be making movies? The launch pads for movies, where's that? Hollywood. Okay, but yet, that activity, the industry, has been successfully attracted to New Mexico. I think there's 13 films going on in New Mexico right now. Uh, so that is significant. Over 300 workers were there with hotel nights and restaurants and dropping GRT into the county and city coffers. Uh, and that's important because when you think about what's on the ballot here, my job here is education and what we're really trying to do. And at the end of the day, it's up to the community to say yay or nay. And as long as everybody has what we're really trying to do, and then the community says no, I'm perfectly fine with that. I have no heartburn. But it needs to be an informed decision, and that education needs to make sure we get it out to everybody so they understand what we're doing. And then the will of the voters. But the launch pads, yeah, they're 120, 125 miles away uh, around the bend. But Huntsville, Alabama to the Cape is over 700 miles away. So Von Braun you know, was here, this industry birthed here, the space activity, the leaders, was right here. And that escaped out to Huntsville, Alabama, which was a very, very small community when that began. Now Redstone Arsenal, NASA, etc., is far away from the, the paths, the launch paths, but the activity. What we're trying to do here is attract this new industry here. Where is Bill Gates from? What what opportunity? Albuquerque. Okay. Where is he today? Seattle. Okay. Missed opportunity. Where are the Wright brothers? You know, East Coast. Here it is. Where is business aviation? Where did that actually take root? Wichita. Now, why in the world would somebody have created aviation and moved it from the Carolinas, where it was being birthed, to Wichita, Kansas? may not make sense to that community, but I would recognize, embraced it, recognized an opportunity, and grabbed a hold of it. Huntsville grabbed a hold of it. Seattle grabbed a hold of it. So um, history now, new industries aren't created every day, but what we're trying to do is not about the launch pads. It's about objectives of economic development, tourism, and education. Those are my objectives, my goals. The governor, when I first walked into his office to go for the check ride, 
uh, to see if I was acceptable. The first question, I wasn't even through the door. He said, Steve, do you know what New Mexico's greatest export is? And I said, no. And I figured, OK, game over. He said, I just leave now. Uh, he said, our kids. So he was sending a strong message that it's not about a spaceport. That, that's a wonderful catalyst. But what my role and objective is with this biz, building this business here is to create opportunities, jobs for the kids, so that if they want to grow up here, get educated here, and retain here, we have the job opportunities of every fashion here locally, so that we can have this for the kids. So that's the mission. It's about this new industry, and the new industries are not created every day. It's a relatively rare function. So what Spaceboard at America is, is a great catalyst. You don't get much more exciting than space. And so space is a wonderful platform to bring this community to a Tularosa Basin that has the history and still does today at Holland and White Sands have the capability to provide assets for these companies who come. They don't have to invest in test equipment. Holland, I just learned last week, has a one million pound rocket motor horizontal test kit. I wish I knew that six months ago when a company was asking for 800,000 pound capability. I looked at White Sands, I looked up at New Mexico Tech, didn't have all the capabilities mapped yet. So we've got hidden assets here that need to be visible so that companies can come here and we can use that as a value proposition to bring them to New Mexico. Uh, so where are we located? So it's 18,000 acres just the other side of the mountain range. It's a very important position and when you look at, put a box around this corridor. Now think of Cape. Go down to the Cape and look at Patrick Air Force Base. Cape and Kennedy, and put a box around that. Now pick up that box in Florida and put it right here. We have every asset that that uh, we're pre-positioned to be this inland spaceport. Where does China and Russia, India have their spaceports? Not on the beaches. So Steve Traver from Pierce's office can tell you that the political winds in Washington are saying we're about to get off the beaches. Too vulnerable. So. We have an inland spaceport like no other place in the U.S., and there are certain advantages here that I'll show in the next couple of slides. But this corridor of activity and capability, when you understand when I talked to Tom Berard, $5 billion, he said, comes in from Washington, D.C. into White Sands Missile Range. $4 billion goes right back out of state. So another value proposition for these companies, Spaceport America is not about the launch pads over here. It's about New Mexico. If I just try to market Spaceport America in a raw piece of desert, you're not going to have much luck. But when you couple that with the assets and launch pads and everything at White Sands Missile Range and all their capability, Holland Air Force Base, you go up to Kirtland and Sandia, and you bring all of these assets together, Spaceport America is about the collective space and aerospace capability here in New Mexico. That is the calling card. That's the value proposition that's going to help us bring this new industry here, along with the excitement of what the state has done. Spaceport America, that brand. Think of that brand versus Spaceport Oklahoma or Southwest Regional Spaceport, which was a predecessor. That's a global powerhouse brand like Microsoft and Apple. It has huge value. Now, couple that with what the state's been able to do to attract Virgin Galactic here to become a New Mexico corporation and not only lease, because the spaceport is a public infrastructure like on Gordo Airport. That's a public infrastructure that's put in publicly, and you, uh, my goal is to go get tenants, to provide lease and user fees to make sure that that's funded. The, but having this the spaceport there has a far greater, that's that calling card, it's just the beginning, that's the tip, that's the catalyst. But the industry is what we really want. So I'm in the the airport here to get those companies to move here. Picture Mojave and all the development work that goes out. Does anybody want to live in Mojave? The people that live there say it's not a place to live. Uh, and they joke about it. But here is a wonderful environment with a semi-private basin that has an opportunity to expand on Alamo Gordo Airport and develop those vehicles here and use the test capabilities and restricted airspace that Alamo and the White Sands have right here locally. So there's a tremendous opportunity to couple all of this together and have this new industry. So Virgin Galactic is going to bring $250 million in technological investment here. 